Hey, what's up guys, Arav here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 77 today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Season 5. You guys did miss the previous episode uploaded the Monaco Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, and I'm sure welcome news to you guys from now on for the next couple of weeks, for the rest of this season, in fact, the episodes will be coming a little bit faster, not just one a week, you may be seeing multiple a week. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that and the additional content as well. But we're going to get into this one then. As by Jean, following a well, it was a it was a difficult Grand Prix as a whole at Monaco because of what happened to us in qualifying, having to make up the ground. But as I think some of you guys were agreeing with me, I think we did a pretty damn decent job, I would say, at a place like Monaco to get up into sixth place from last on the grid. Uh, yeah, I think I think we did the best damage recovery we could have done, to be honest. But it was a great day in the office, of course, for the likes of Yuki Tsunoda, who got his second. Second win in his Formula One career. A big kickstart of Alpha Tauri needed as they try and make up the ground. You know, they're seventh place in the constructors right now. That is very surprising considering, well, we've seen glimpses of their true pace that they still kind of have carried over from last season. But the big difference is Gasly has not been performing in the same way he did last season. You know, he's not been dragging the car up way ahead of where Sonoda is. And that means Sonoda is right now leading the team. And uh, Alpha Tauri look no better than their, you know, more senior team Red Bull, who obviously were floundering last season and look a little bit stronger in the hands of Giovinazzi. Two fifth places for him. Very, very solid stuff. Leclerc is continuing to be pretty damn decent. You know, uh, first place at Imola and then a podium at his home race. It means he's there in the top two of the championship, just behind George Russell, who is, I'm still surprised he's actually found himself in first place. Obviously, especially in the last two episodes, Imola to Monaco, there have been some massive yo-yo swings of, you know, luck and just who's had the results there, you know, Sainz is one of them, looks so strong after Imola, and then Monaco is a very quiet race for him, and for us, you know, four races into this season, we've, we've kind of not had any horrendous results, you know, we've scored points in every race so far, but we've not got on a podium yet, which is quite surprising, and actually something I've only just realised now, looking at those results just gone, as we now head into the race weekend, qualifying for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, can we try and get onto the podium? Podium this episode five races in I think it's kind of we're overdue for one you know we need to show that we've still got it we've still got the you know the, the 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 skill to extract some speed out of this car and clearly the car has the speed to get on the podium because Leclerc has been showing it in the last two episodes and generally speaking we go well around Azerbaijan I actually have grown to really enjoy it as a circuit uh, in qualifying and the race on the F1 games when it first came in really didn't gel with it but uh, nowadays look forward to it you know finding a bit of a rhythm once you get in that rhythm really good just it's a case of staying off the curbs really more than anything in qualifying especially so let's see if we can try and take that own wisdom into our own driving today as we make our way through the first session no issues for us and looking strong you know for for once showing a bit of speed in Q1 versus our teammate Leclerc this is this season in P5 Guan Yu Zhou is right up there Sonoda it's it, it's the time for the quote-unquote second or you know newer drivers or more junior drivers I guess you could say you've got Russell, the newcomer in McLaren, beating Norris there. You've got Guan Yu Zhou ahead of Algy Bottas, uh, Sonoda ahead of Gasly. You know, this season, you know, uh, even with ourselves, Leclerc at the moment is beating me in the standings. It's time for that the second drive, even if, even if they're not actually the you know, official second drive, you know what I mean. Just the, the other seat, it's time for their time to shine, it would seem, for a lot of these teams. Even Giovinazzi in the Red Bull, he's the newcomer. Schumacher, the one who was here last season, he's being beaten by Giovinazzi consistently in the last two episodes. So there's something in the air. There's something in the coding, it would seem, this season with that second seat for a lot of these teams. But we're going to try and make amends for it uh, this race weekend. So now here on the first run in the second part of qualifying, hopefully will be enough to get through into the top 10 shootout. Bit of oversteer as we go through the left hand. A bit too eager to get on the power early. But now chucking it through the castle section, getting oh so close to the walls, using as much curb as we can to try and rotate the car around that tricky section where some under steer can kick in and then down that motorway like straight across the line P2 there Leclerc a lot quicker than myself and on the medium tyre so we're through into the top 10 shootout but Leclerc is the only man who gets through on the medium so that could open him up to uh, a, well a substantial advantage in this strategy tomorrow but that is a blistering lap from Leclerc to get through and on, on medium tyres Russell again showing some good pace in the McLaren both McLarens look like they've actually solidified 
themselves and actually have some good, consistent pace now. The Williams, a different story. Guan Yu Zhou, I just talked about, I just bigged him up. And he's now being knocked down in Q2. Bottas made it through, but he did not, surprising. And both Red Bulls are through. Sonoda, the only Alpha Tauri through. So maybe not in the case with Williams, but definitely Alpha Tauri. I think Gasly's actually taken a serious knock to his focus and confidence. And Sonoda has very much got a bump of focus from that win at Monaco. Uh, because that is surprising. We never saw that last season. You know, at times, last season, we did see Granu Joe beating Bottas in qualifying here and there. But last season, it was con kind of consistently Gasly being there, you know, beating Sonoda in quality and the race, being the team leader. Sonoda, he's now starting to step up a little bit this season. So uh, more power to him, and we'll see how that develops. But for us then, top 10 shootout, interesting times, knowing that, ne you know, uh, the next day on Sunday in the race, Leclerc has a massive advantage of the medium. So, you know, we're just going to try and channel that frustration, maybe, that he may have an advantage. Just trying to do the best job we can now of trying to beat him in his quality and trying to get this car as high as we can. And I'm feeling good about the car. Uh, I've not really had any foibles. A few little bits of uh, oversteer here and there, but generally speaking, pretty good. Having said that, though, that first run wasn't very tidy. You saw, as I was talking about all of that, there were moments where I took too much of the curb in sectors one, two, and even three a little bit. You know, I wasn't as confident confident with that, you know, left and right before we get onto the back straight, where I had to lift off a little bit because I left the rear end stepping out. So just needing to fix little bits like that to gain the time because as it stands right now, we're down in P8. Norris doesn't do me a favor there. I get a tiny toe from him, but really not that much. And he gets in my way, but we get past him whilst we're on this qualifying lap. We're getting four tenths through the castle section. Just a case of carrying way more confidence and therefore speed through those corners. A further four tenths gained through the last and across the line with a purple middle sector, a green second sector, we go and bag pole position at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A really, really tasty lap and it, it was a close one though because look how, how, how that close that is. The top four separated by four thousandths of a second. That is unbelievable. Russell P2, Sainz P3, Bottas in fourth. You've got Porsche, McLaren, Aaron Ferrari, Williams in the top four. Very, very exciting stuff. And, you know, still, you know, exciting times for, you know, Giovinazzi being up there in P6. Again, showing he's doing a good job for Red Bull. And Leclerc, P5, he's still going to be pretty damn happy with that. And remember, he's on medium, so he could be in a really good position. But for us, we're on the top spot. Pole position. It's been a while since we've been on pole. So let's just cherish it. It's a really decent pole. We made up for it on the second run versus the first. We knew where we'd make him mistakes. Just a bit of lack of confidence maybe on the first run, but committed a bit more on this second. Took some risks and we've got the pole position. Now let's try and see what we can do with it tomorrow on Sunday. Let's go to the grid. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home of course to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today, so our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully away from the barriers. With 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles, Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience and precision. 90 degree corners through sector one lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through sector three towards the finish line. It's just about time to go to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. It's the owner driver in pole position then. Just ahead of George Russell who starts this event from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Leclerc, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Norris, Sonoda, Verstappen, Mick Schumacher and Lance Stroll, Joe, Gasly, Esteban Ocon and Bottas. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Islet, Mazepin, 
Nicholas Latifi and Lewis Hamilton. Aitken, Matsushita, Lundgaard, and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So it's been an absolute hot minute and a half since we had this view in front of us. No cars ahead apart from the safety car as we get ready for this race. In terms of the strategy then, a two-stop either way, even involving the hard compound attire like we saw last season, I think it was as well. The softs are going to wear out quite quickly and then we're going to go to suit set of medium. So that actually might allude to Leclerc there in P4 on the medium, even, you know, Guan Yu Zhou and Gasly outside the top 10. Those two start on the mediums, maybe they won't be an advantage. I thought Leclerc was actually in a, in a massive advantage here, but forgetting actually, you know, the last couple of seasons, we had a bit more tire wear, especially last season, we saw that around Azerbaijan, but we've always had some hectic races around Baku, so, you know, sometimes this strategy gets completely thrown out the window. It's a case of pitting at the right time with safety cars or whatever have you, uh, and then also facing the tire wear, but if everything kind of goes to plan, maybe Leclerc may not have an advantage, and uh, it's just a case of trying to make the most of the softs before they wear out and vice versa make the most of the fresher mediums later when Leclerc might be feeling some tire wear. But we get ready to go then for the fifth round of season five the Azerbaijan Grand Prix from pole position we go to five red lights and we're underway we're moving left straight away trying to cover off Russell but he's not going to have it he's sent it down the inside oh Russell takes us wide a little bit and Giovinazzi has been allowed to go down the inside the attack Italian leads the way. Leclerc makes it three wide. He dive bombs and hits Russell. And the two have their front wings off. I think the safety car has been called out. Yes, it has. We've lost the position to Carlos Sainz, but we did avoid what could have been pretty catastrophic damage between Leclerc and Russell there. We backed out of it. Leclerc did not. He committed way too much and was way too aggressive and has paid the price there. But this is our covering off Russell. Didn't work out. Russell repays the favour by pushing us wide a bit, so that's fair enough, you know, we went toe-to-toe, -to -toe. that's all fine, Gio came out the best of that, look at the start he got, Leclerc uh, likewise covered it, or tried to cover him off, then there's a little bit of contact myself and Russell May, Gio down the inside, that's all pretty clean to be fair, and just hard racing, but then this was just a little bit stupid from Leclerc at the place where, well, he, he has been stupid before in the past in real life, and uh, yeah, himself and Russell then with our front wing, you know, uh, just wasn't really needed, you know, everything up to that point was fine, you know, myself and Russell had a good fight, you know, unfortunately we lost out there, that's fine, it was hard racing, Giovinazzi got down the inside you know, very opportunistic by him, Leclerc just got a bit too greedy, he was in a good position, he could have just, you know, stayed tucked in with myself you know, side by side, and we could have both been you know, in the top four, but instead we now find ourselves uh, behind Carlos Sainz, but up in third place because Russell and Leclerc have both had to pit then for a front wing change. But Giovinazzi, what a season he is having so far. Two, uh, wasn't it, fifth places in a row. And now he leads a race here in the Red Bull. His career has been rejuvenated in this back end of this My Team career series, it would seem. Got a good chance to maybe re-jump the Ferrari, get back into what should kind of be rightfully our second place. We lost that to Sainz only due to having to back out of that uh, three wide battle on lap one. So now we're going to try and make up for it. We're going to do it straight away. What did I say? Good prime position being in the slipstream. A science a little bit vulnerable there. Went over defensive, I feel, on the inside and didn't cover off the racing line uh, on the outside of turn one. So we just got through very easily up into P2. And now we try and see what we can do chasing after Giovinazzi. Proving difficult, though. He's actually got some really good pace for the car. The Italian, 1.9 the gap. It's kind of remained what it was. It, it's in fact grown over that just one racing lap we've had from green there so the Italian is flying there the fast lap of the Grand Prix as well and uh, looking like it might be a tough job to try and erode down that lead we'll try and settle in maybe we just haven't found the groove totally I don't feel like I'm driving too badly right now but Gio is driving better at the moment signs pressurizing me we do find some pace purple second sector and we gain a bit more time cheekily on the pit lane entry as well on Giovanni 
Nazi. He is in. We are in as well. Schumacher goes on. A load of us are in, though. So this fight's going to continue on. Then on to the next stint. Myself, the Giovinazzi, and maybe even Carlos Sainz as well in the Ferraris. We come in now for a very quick stop. 1.8 on the blocks. Really good stop. And we've jumped Giovinazzi. What a great stop by the pit crew. That was a lightning pit stop. And that has jumped the Red Bull. So technically, maybe into a position to be in first place once others make their pit stops and this all kind of shakes up the strategy but Giovinazzi comes back at us then and he's got supreme confidence to try and outbreak us round the outside we go defensive there and we just about are able to keep our 14th place here on the road but my oh my I can see why Giovinazzi maybe got into first place and why he was looking so good in issuing that first stint he's got some real good confidence in the car and I was definitely taking my surprise when I saw him on my outside there going for a move as there's a massive incident in the castle section unsurprisingly at Baku there is chaos at the castle section there is another safety car here now the second one of the day and this is messy I don't know who's ghosted and who's not Sainz just overtaken us under that ghosting that's a little bit fishy but that's what happens when you have ghosting in the game uh, sometimes I do kind of wish there was a little bit less ghosting in the career mode scenarios here because that was a bit of a tricky situation to, to note because you can see that car in the middle it was solidifying as well so I wasn't fully sure if I could you know very easily commit to going through these cars and also what is I didn't want to get a yellow flag uh, overtaking someone I wasn't meant to but uh, unlike last time when there was uh, an incident I gained from it I have lost out in that ghosting science has overtaken me but we've got there was a good eight cars involved and there's actually more chaos that happened after because that was definitely a hass I think that crashed after it went through the ghosted cars. That's mental. Giovinazzi lost out big time as well. Uh, there, was a, there was a Haas reversing out the castle section and uh, it looked like Ricardo was one of the biggest victims there, crashing into the Alpine, who is the main culprit sideways. I think ha having a uh, crash with the Aston Martin potentially on the entry of the castle section. So, uh, you know, big, big incident there. Not too many DFs, uh, DNFs though that have come from that. It was just a big moment of a load of cars all overlapping each other whilst ghosted but uh, it has caused the second safety car then of the afternoon and has shaked up the order a little bit. So after all of that we're in P7 then it would seem with Sainz Ocon ahead of us we've got Verstappen behind with a penalty that I think he got in that whole ghosting uh, fiascos. We now go green again on lap 9 and we try to go down the inside of the Ferrari but Sainz actually has other ideas and he goes down the inside of Ocon then. It could have been 3 wide into turn one but as we've done so far already in this race we're taking avoiding action playing the longer smarter game not getting our nose stuck in where it doesn't need to be you know we've had that already too many times this season I want to have a clean race and know the car has the pace to be right up there we got pole position so just trying to keep it as clean as we can and in the end patience pays out for us because we're able to overtake Sainz then up into P6 uh, in a bit of an awkward overtake I must say having to really tiptoe around the curbs and his car but we've uh, we've done the move and now we have a nice clean run on Esteban Ocon on the Alpine he's defenseless there no DRS for him we're flying with a, a lot of ERS actually to overuse in the back part of the lap there because I didn't use that much in the first part and meanwhile we see Schumacher fighting with Gasly Alpha Tauri the Red Bull bit of an awkward fight especially after last season where Alpha Tauri was pretty much the bigger Red Bull team so it's a matter of principle and pride these days when these two teams fight each other Schumacher trying to make the overtake on the inside of its seam. Gasly trying to defend having been on the mediums since the start of the Grand Prix. Schumacher on fresher tyres. The same as Guan Yu Zhou. He's on the medium since the beginning and those two are holding up and holding on to one and two so far. Meanwhile, we've just made that move on Stroll down the inside. Easy does it. Deja vu to the move we made on the Ferrari but we continue to watch on Gasly v Schumacher and we're just trying to get our cards right to make the correct move to try and get these two smooth 
smoothly in one go. Gasly has another pop at Schumacher. He slows himself down enough where we can make a move on the outside there. And now we've got a great run. Schumacher's defenseless without DRS. And we'll try and make the move on the outside again. Taking it a bit easy. Just making sure we don't outbreak ourselves. And we're up into P2 now. Hopefully in the next right-hander. Schumacher's still there on the outside. We give him the room to work with. But we are into P2. And now we've got five seconds to Guan Yu Zhou. Whether we can bridge that before the pit stop, I doubt it. But we've now got a good bit of, good, a good bit of clean air to just work with a little bit and try and see what we can do. But that's actually not too much because Schumacher is coming back with me. And you've got to remember, Schumacher is on the same strategy as I am. He's already made a pit stop. He's on fresh mediums. Whereas Guan Yu Zhou and Gasly, they've just pit. They've just pit for the first time in this race. So Schumacher giving me a bit of pressure. And we saw how quick Giovinazzi was. So shouldn't be too surprised. It looks like the Red Bull does have some decent pace. So you just have to try and watch out for that. But uh, hopefully try and break... The, the, the one second a little bit with Schumacher just to give us some breathing room. However, on lap 13, we're not going to be given that chance to get some breathing room because we've got um, another incident. We've got an Alfa Romeo sideways in the worst area. That's literally on the racing line, like on the blind right-hander. And so that's why, for good measure, there is a third safety car. Would have been a bit different if it was on the, on the other side, but being on the apex of a blind right-hander calls for concern. But we've already gone across the start-finish line as well. Well, Schumacher, when that safety car came out, Leclerc's pit in under the safety car. Others have as well, maybe. Sainz, not, not so much as well. So both, all, uh, all three of us, myself, Schumacher and Sainz, uh, you know, top runners, if you will, uh, you know, are taken a bit by surprise by the safety car. We've not had the kind of full free pit stop. We'll get, obviously, a pit stop under the safety car done now, and we'll go on to a second set of mediums, and this will be to the end of the Grand Prix. Bit of a longer stint on this second set of mediums than the first, but let's hope that we can get to the end with no tyre issues, and let's see has there been any advantage for people under a safety car. Guan Yu Zhou is there on the right, and we just about jump him. So, Guan Yu Joe's five second gap has been eroded and we actually jumped him in this entire range of pit stops. So that really must have been, you know, the work we did before the pit stop though. Guan Yu Joe must have been must have not been that quick on his set of mediums and we must have had some good pace there because really well and truly the safety car coming out didn't really change too much in terms of who gained an advantage or not, you know, under that delta time. But uh, just good work for the pit crew as well to get us ahead, uh, you know, in good time out of the pit stops to, to make that move because, you know, one, one or two tenths and I would have lost out and I would have, you know, by the rules, would have had to stick behind Guan Yu Zhou on the safety car restarts. That's worked in our favour really, really well. And now we're looking on to another restart looking at the back of the McLaren now. George Russell may be a big winner in the safety cars though because he's up in third place. Didn't really realise this. I don't know if he has to make a pit stop or not yet. Maybe he does because he's easy work at turn one and Guan Yu Zhou's even making a move on him potentially in the next corner. He hasn't actually finished it though because Russell does remain in P4 as we cut on to later on that same lap. But that was really easy on Russell so I feel like he may have tyre wear and that means he's yet to pit again for a second time maybe McLaren didn't feel like it was time yet uh, because of uh, such a you know uh, short period between safety cars I don't know but uh, we made a very easy work of him and now looking at Bottas and Sonoda these two are in to the pit Sonoda and Bottas in Russell's in so yep yeah, they were yet to pit for whatever reason they 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 stayed out I don't know why probably a worse decision than just staying out than uh, as they did because uh, it's made it easy for us I mean we over already made the move on Russell and we we're going to make the move on Bottas, but we're into P1 now, lap 18, going to the end. It's all about now trying to fend off Guan Yu Zhou, fend off Schumacher, and trying to control this race. But we are in the lead, and we are in it for the win, hopefully, today. And what's going to maybe help us out is also Schumacher charging and looking to get up into second place. It's going to be Guan Yu Zhou versus Mick Schumacher. Red Bull, the Williams Jaguar. The Williams defends on the inside. Schumacher on the outside there. The German goes round the outside and sweeps round the P2. And the Williams doesn't have much to, to show for it there. Bit of puff of smoke from me as I, I assume I locked up in that left-hander. But Schumacher now has clean air. 2.7 the gap. Does Schumacher 
Osaka have the pace to close me up because Grand Yujo was not. I actually extended my gap from 1.5 to about 2.2. The gap is 2.3 right now, 2.5 fluctuating. So let's see how it goes on. Six laps to go. Meanwhile, behind, a Williams is making a move this time. It's Bottas. Lovely, lovely move in a very flat out uh, area of the circuit. Bottas up into P10, but how the mighty fall. Bottas and Gasly, two massive drivers last season, especially at the end of it. So rapid Bottas was and, and Gasly as well, of course, in our championship fight. They're fighting for the wooden spoon, the last point, and Sonoda is making a, a truly astonishing effort to overtake his uh, more senior teammate, Sonoda, trying to get up into P11. No points on offer. Alpha Tauri again having a race to forget but within that race to forget you're seeing the dynamics clearly changing. Gasly does not have the same sort of focus as he did last season. Sonoda has improved focus and is showing that he is maybe actually going to be the man leading the way for AlphaTauri at least in this first part of the season because he couldn't quite finish off the move earlier but he's going to finish it off now. He's up into P11 and he'll maybe try and chase after Bottas to fight him. Bottas though has other ideas. Lap 22 Two, four laps to go, chasing after his old teammate, Lewis Hamilton, and the Williams powers past the Mercedes up into P9. Meanwhile, for us, 3.5 the second gap you can see in P1. So we are controlling, if not actually pulling away from Schumacher, showing the pace that we had in qualifying to get pole position feels great. It's felt great for this entire last stint. That first medium stint, not going to lie, there was a bit of tyre wear and the rear end was stepping out, but I don't know what it was, but on this second stint, didn't get as much as the same of that, and we just felt comfy, and so here we are on the last lap of the Grand Prix. Sainz may well go for a last lap overtake on the Alpine. Oh, what a move there by the Ferrari on the last lap, but for us, it's across the line. It's the first podium of the season. It's our first win of the season. The win at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Chaos in Baku, but we've come through to win. That is absolutely awesome. So after a day of mixed fortunes up and down the field, we bring today's race to a close. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? A reliable car. That was the most important factor here. This was a real battle of attrition, and you could tell those at the front were trying to find a balance between running their outright pace and taking care of the car to reach the end. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. After a really decent comeback drive at Monaco, this is an even better one to follow. The first podium, the first win, and a really, really satisfying one because of that last stint where, you know, to be fair for you guys, not much action because I didn't have to defend against Schumacher. We had him covered. But for me, it was great, you know, just, you know, easy going, controlling it protecting the tyres, doing what we needed to do, and behind us there was drama with Sainz nabbing fifth place there, which could be crucial by the end of the season for Sainz and Ferrari. You know, Sainz is second in the championship. That fifth place on the last lap, you know, it could come down to something like that. So, GG's to him and Leclerc. It's a bit of a race to forget down to third place in the standings. We take the lead, surprisingly. Didn't think there would be that much of a swing, but I guess, you know, the likes of Russell, obviously, the, the previous championship leader, he had a, a horrid race really after that late second pit stop. Uh, or a third pit stop after the safety car. So, uh, yeah, a day to forget for some people and a great day to remember for us at Azerbaijan. Despite all the chaos, three safety cars, we come through and we actually had a very steady race, you know. We, you know, apart from lap one being a close shave, we just kept it clean. We were patient when we need to be patient and, you know, the, the just rewards here today with the win at Azerbaijan. Guys, if you did enjoy the episode, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content and i'll see you guys next time goodbye